is high enough, you are able to work very directly as what we call a, co a conscious co-worker with the divine being itself. It doesn't mean that you're not going to a monastery or some mountainous region and just you know, concentrate on God forever and be useless to your fellow man. No. You work with beings. You have a job. I am an engineer. I work for KPMG as a cloud engineer. My, I studied engineering in college. Uh, this is, I'm sharing my experience with you to help you. Not because it's some monetary thing for me. No, it's not. Uh, just so you put that aside. But this is how everybody is. Of course, there are people who work as ministers or as uh, you know, uh, health practitioners. These are all ways to serve God one way or the other. If you're doing it truly with your heart, it's another way of serving life. All right. We've lived many times, so many lifetimes. This is not the first one, the second one, the third one, the tenth one. Or the hundreds one either, for that matter. All of us, we've been here before, and we've been in other places before. The bodies we wear are not permanent bodies. Today you may be here as a female or a male. Tomorrow, when I say tomorrow, I mean in another lifetime, you'll come back as a male. And why? Because we're switching contexts all the time so that we can gain experiences on both sides. Again, to learn the true law of love. If you look through history yourself as much as you can right now, you will find that most of the challenges that man has faced is a struggle over power and love. It has been you know, put in so many contexts as, oh, religion, uh, God tells me to tell you this. Well, God speaks to all of us, you know, and because of religion, people manipulate the true teaching to gain power over and over. You know. But again, this morning I was woken up around 7, 10, while I was trying to do my contemplation. I do that every morning. By an old friend of mine, he became a pastor in the church. And he's furious. He said, what kind of God allows this? Where people use religion to cheat others, to kill others, and which you know, he's been a strong believer in Christianity before that only Christians will go to heaven because they have Jesus. Then he met a friend who was a Hindu that was so loving and nice and kind. And he started wondering, how can this guy go to hell? Hell. <laughs> so that was his awakening. I said, Oh, you're awake finally. <laughs> and then he, he laughed. And now I started telling him about reincarnation. That God is neither good nor bad. But the law of good and bad, we call it the law of polarity. It exists in this lower world so that we can learn this lesson. The divine being is pure love. This love is what each and every one of us is. And we've forgotten. And your past lives, when you start to unravel them, they will start to awaken you to, your, to this true nature that you have. It's very powerful. It's more powerful than people trying to use power to control other, others. When you can love people truly, everything opens up to you. Everything. Love is all. Okay. Back to past lives now. <laughs> your family, your friends, and your enemies, all these people are from your past. <coughs> There's hardly really, really any stranger in your circumstances. All of them are known from before. They are either your friends, your enemies, you know, but it doesn't, it's not a linear mapping. What I'm saying is, you see a person, you love them immediately. Why? Because there's a strong emotional connection between both of you. It may not necessarily be good, it's, you know, if you imagine two extreme uh, uh, enemies, they fought each other to the death, maybe 2000 BC. That's emotion space. They have to come back and resolve it. Sometimes they come back as two brothers in a family. And they don't know. But if you like them because they are your brother, you must like them, right? 
society says that. But then every now and then there's tension between both of you. Where is it coming from? It's from your past life. It gives you a chance to come back. Finally, life will come around to the same situation that caused the conflict that lifetime ago. And you have the choice to choose between power and love again. If you've learned your lesson and truly love, that aspect of love has become your true nature, then you would act out of love. And that situation will finally resolve. And you're free from that. You can now truly love that brother as a brother. The same goes for the love relationship, the so-called love at first sight. Then, at the third sight, like two years into the marriage or something, you say, what the heck did I do? You know? Why? Because you owe each other something and you are put together again to fix it. Sometimes people don't. They break it up before they fix it and they have to go it another round. It doesn't seem to end. But you can break this cycle. You know, I'll, by the time we finish this segment, we will go into this sacred song of God. It's called the Hue. When you chant it, it opens your consciousness to this love of God and it starts to go into all these aspects of your life material, spiritual, mental, everything and it starts to break all those rigid patterns that have held you back from progressing spiritually so that finally you can be free of those things and be able to move forward spiritually. That's how it works. And it doesn't mean that it's going to happen overnight because it will be too much you know, if it happens overnight. I was talking to a young lady earlier on and she was sharing an experience of visiting the world of golden light and gold and everything. I remember myself, I think around 1979, when I was new in, you know, to this teaching, one of the Eggmasters, we call them Eggmasters, one of the divine beings there, took me on this journey straight into this one of these worlds. It was a world of such intense love. Can you imagine that love can actually burn you if you are not ready for it? It is so intense, and every aspect of this world is intensely brilliant golden color. I was I just ran out of it, the experience. But I was brought back into it because I was being exposed to it so I can burn off all these petty natures that I had. All the you know uh, just call it pet petty natures. Uh, jealousies, vanity, arrogance, anger, you know, burn enough so that I can accommodate this presence of God. And all these things will also affect your relationship with people because the, the what you owe them start to yield. You know, you start to act more in the love to the, the people around you. Now, the uh, I I jump in on a random topics so that I can encompass everything in one. You know, I'm talking about soul travel. I'm talking about past lives and also dreams. Most people take the first. You know, steps to soul travel in their dreams. Every time you dream, you actually go out of the body. Whether or not you meditate or contemplate or, or you think you are holy or not holy, forget about all that. Every time you close your eyes, you actually dream. I mean, you can actually go out of the body. Sometimes my wife will tell me, Oh, Austin, you snore when you're sleeping. I say, I know that. Because by the time I'm closing my eyes, I, see, I can see my face, I see my nose, and I hear myself snoring. But well, who is hearing myself? My body is snoring, but I'm shifting, I'm moving into another dimension. This shifting is actually each being, and it's every one of us is doing it. It's just the veil is pulled down so that we are not shocked. You're doing it. You are just changing perspective. It's almost like as you came here now, you parked your car and then you walked in here. The same you are doing when you're sleeping, you dock the body. You park the body and then you shift into another body or state of consciousness that you already are. You are not just starting a dream, you're just continuing. But it looks like you're starting. But your lack of training 
doesn't allow you to connect the dots. So the, look, the dream sometimes looks fragmented, jumbled, all over the place. But it is a seamless and continuous existence in another dimension. When you start to unravel it, you can learn more and move faster. Sometimes even a problem here can be taken over there to be resolved. Because over there, life is more flexible. You know, most dreams actually occur in the, in the first heaven. You know, I, was, I brought this chart, but I'll probably go back to it later so that we can move, make, uh, you know, make progress. Uh, I'm almost going to move into the second segment now. This segment has to do with the exercise. How do you start all this unraveling? How do you awaken that soul? So that even if you're dreaming, you know that I'm in another world and this dream image is just a camouflage. And guess what, right? You only remember a dream when you're coming out of it. And you remember a little bit of it. And in a five minutes maximum, most of it is gone. Boom. Why? So that you can focus on this one. But the dream is a real experience. It's so, we call it soul travel. Later, you'll be able to now go vividly without necessarily uh, needing the cloak of, of the dream. You know, it's very, very strange how that, how that works. So, the first step is this love song to God. We call it the cue. It's a sacred chance you can use to awaken yourself as soul. Every time you chant that word, you it's a sound of God. It awakens your soul, opens your consciousness, and this pure essence, the pure love of God starts to flow through you. Your spiritual eye will start to open, and you can actually see the light of God, depending on, the, on your consciousness, different colors, because that will depend on what level, this, this is a chart put together to depict the heavens. As you go up, in, you know, the vibrations are changing, so the colors are changing, all right? And there are various sounds or the voice of God that you hear in those levels of consciousness that actually awakens you, you know, and lets you hear the message of God directly. You may hear a music or a sound, you may see a light, you know, or you see a blue star, a white star, you know, or just extreme brilliance. This are fused into your consciousness and all that is there will become unraveled into your life as you go on. Suddenly you just realize that you know some things, you don't know how you know it. But this is the inner teaching that is coming directly to you as soul. So, we will do this exercise now for about uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. For about 10 minutes. So, uh, gets uh, comfortable. It's a simple exercise and there's no ritual involved, there's nothing. Just, you know, put your attention gently on the spiritual eye. It is the, uh, sometimes called the third eye, sometimes called the tisra teal, you know, in some cultures. But it is a portal to the heavenly worlds. You know, it is the gateway to the heavenly worlds. You just gently look at it. There's no need to try and concentrate heavily. This is not heavy concentration or anything like that. It's more like musing around an idea. It's all contemplation. And to make this connection very fast, hold a feeling of love that you remember. Maybe when you fell in love the first time, or when you, you know, saw a piece of art that just opened your heart. Every time you felt, you felt love, you actually touched the face of God. So hold that feeling as you sing that hue. It's just you and do it at your own pace, your own tune. Right. 